Hello all, good morning, good evening or good afternoon. And as promised in the previous video, where we did set up the SSL certificate on Business Central 2024 release wave 1. In this particular video, we'll go a little bit further into it and we'll try to set up and access SOAP web services, OData web services and APIs on a service tier where SSL has been enabled. Um, this is based on a request plus I also read a question today on the community forum um, so we'll get into it and then we'll try to see what steps are involved now if you haven't watched the previous video uh, make sure you watch it and if you have watched it then and you still have this question where the scripts are let me open my github and in this of uh, github repo uh, on service environment powershells you'll be able to see the nav username and ssl uh, powershell command that we utilized in the previous video so before we get into it just a humble request if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the channel that helps us to understand how we are doing we are seeing a trend that there are more people who are watching the videos which are not subscribed to the to the channel we love that you guys are watching, but your subscribe will help us to understand how we are doing. Should we keep doing it or should I change the path of adding the content around with the central? Okay, so let's get into it without wasting any further time into it. Okay, so if you remember, we did set up the HTTPS with SSL credential and this is the PowerShell command, which I was referring that you can access from the GitHub portal. Now in this particular video, we'll move a step further and I'll create a separate script. So if you have dealt with it, then you kind of move to the next step, right? Uh, for that, let me start a new script here and let me just, I'll prepare the header later and let me import the module, okay, which is already done. But let's for, first try to see what happens when I try to access web services on this. So when I go into the web services page, there are pre-built uh, web services endpoint which are available. And as you can see, they are published. There is no SOAP URL at this moment for some of these. And some have the OData URL. But both of them are pointing to HTTP, not to HTTPS. And we have already configured the SSL certificate into it. Let's try to access this. And I get an error message which says, that this server refused to connect. Now, if you see this, then the first thing that you need to check is your service. So let's open our service config, which is on your program files. So if you come here and search or look for SOAP and OData, the ports are defined, which is great. And let's come down. Okay. They're not in the sequential order for some reasons. <laughs> but if you see here somewhere, and I don't see it, so let me search for it. That'll be easy. So if I search for SOAP, this is the port, and this is enabled. So if you look at it, the service is not enabled, neither for SOAP and neither for OData. So the first thing that we have to is we have to enable SOAP and OData. OData comes into two variant, OData and OData 4. So and the OData v4 is enabled, but OData v earlier v, whatever the v is, is not enabled. So let's get into our coding or scripting and try to set the service. So here is how you set up the service, right? So let's copy one of these, paste it here. And let's set up the parameters. So the first parameter is SOAP service enable. So we'll just change the key parameter and the value would be true. Okay. So if you're not uh, during installation, you might have not enabled it like I did not do did it when I installed business center. So if you're like me who only enable things when needed, then enable it. If in your case, OData services v4 endpoint is enabled false, then also set that. Let's just do this first and see what happens. 
and whenever we are changing the service we will also have to restart the service so let's add that step here okay so you are good here let's run this set so as you are running what it is doing right now it's going back into the config file and updating these parameters to be true you might ask why we did not change the parameter directly uh, from the time where Microsoft stopped supporting the administration panel what I have noticed and I have heard from others also that directly changing the file is not suggested because it kind of behaves a little bit weird so I would highly encourage you to not to modify any config file or JSON file that you're seeing related to configuration uh, manually, but use the PowerShell command to, uh, to kind of change those. So now let's see what happened to our SOAP web service and ODATA web service. Okay, so now if you see the SOAP web service is enabled and ODATA is also enabled. We haven't enabled the SSL thing yet, We'll get into it, but we are just enabling the ports. Okay. Okay. There's my password and let's get in. So now because we changed it, it kind of restarted the service, but now I should be able to click on this hopefully and use my username and hopefully my password as it is let me try that okay and let's sign in okay so i think it'll be working but let's see let's go into an soap endpoint and see what happens when i try to access um, a page okay oh okay let's click on this and it again asks me for username and password Okay, so my SOAP seems to be responding with my uh, response. Uh, this is my <clears throat> uh, ODATA port or ODATA endpoint that I tried. And I'm able to see the vendor ledger entry from the ODATA v4 endpoint. The last thing that we are going to try on this, let's try that also, is Postman. We would like to test out is our API endpoint working or not because that's the other thing that we wanted to test out when we did this. So, okay. Uh, okay. The postman is enabled now and we should be testing out. Can we access the ODATA ports? Oh, sorry, the API endpoints. Okay. So for a API endpoint, what we'll have to do is do an HTTP and then the server name which in our case is this so i'll just try to copy this and then the port number so let me try to copy this this is the odata port number so if you're getting confused it's odata port number here and then the service name which is pc240 in my case and then at the end api v2.0 okay because uh I'm using basic right now, so I'll just use this and try to do a send and let's see what happens. Do I get a response? Okay. So it says address not found view in console. Okay. So I might have added this twice. I should not have done that. Let me remove this. Okay. Sounds fair. Let's do a send. Okay, it's trying to access that URL and if everything goes well, I should be able to see the API endpoint that are available on this particular environment, which I can see. So here I can see all my API endpoint which are exposed by the API v2 uh, extension <coughs> from Microsoft. Okay, so this all works as of today, uh, as of now. Now what we are going to do is there is an SSL setting also. So if you look at it here, SOAP services SSL enabled is set to false. Same for ODATA, SSL enabled is set to false. And now let's check where else is SSL enabled properties there. Let me go to the top. Okay. So first is management service port, uh, API services. Okay management API and this is for client which we enabled in the previous video 
this is the developer service which we don't want SSL enable at this moment snapshot debugger we are not utilizing that so now we have SOAP and OData SSL enable and guess I guess that should be the last oh there's one more okay but in summary we have to do two more settings changes one is uh, around the SOAP and another is around the OData so let's pick those settings and we should be good to go at that point and let's see what happens so I'm going to enable this in the same way as we did this okay and also for the OData okay so this is my key name so I'll just set this here and the value I surely would like to change it to true and then we'll see is there a problem while we are trying to access this now this time I'll run the whole bunch yeah we have run the other properties earlier but I would like to refresh and see what happens when I enable these now the only difference that we have made is we have enabled uh, the SSL endpoint on these OData and SOAP web services the impact of it would be visible on the webs, uh, web services screen where the endpoints now should point to HTTPS rather than the HTTP that they were pointing earlier now the settings has been updated the service has been restarted so we are good there let's come back and let's try to refresh this page now at this point um, the environment should be able to kind of understand it and show it to me what are the settings okay so now at this point I'm on my web services page which lists down all my web services and if you notice all these endpoint has been updated to HTTPS either they are OData or SOAP let's try to access the same OData endpoint which is the vendor ledger entries and see what changes okay is there an error when I'm trying to access this or not so the only thing you still get the same result as you are getting here this is the same result the only difference is it was non-secure it is still non-secure but this is non-secure because the it's a self-signed certificate and it is not able to kind of validate the authority who is kind of uh, approving this certificate now what we access on the SOAP is sales order so let's try to open the same page on SOAP URL and let's try to pass a password into it and I'm still able to access it so my OData endpoints and my SOAP endpoints are enabled with SSL now the last thing that we need to test out is Postman now what will change here is from HTTP it will change to HTTPS when I try to run this on Postman, you will see that there is an SSL error that it is unable to verify the first certificate. Now it says you can disable it here. If you don't see it here, you can get into the settings area. And because it's a self-signed certificate and only for self-signed certificate. So just remember if, if you have purchased the certificate, then you should not be needing to kind of disable the SSL verification. But you can do it from here and once it is done you can send it back and this will show you all the api endpoints that were exposed so let's quickly understand what we did we updated the service parameter with four settings if the ports were not enabled we enabled those port if the port were enabled we enabled the ssl uh, enable property into the page now if you have tried it earlier and failed uh, and your service is not restarting there is a good blog post from AJ Kaufman it's a pretty old blog post but uh, it happens because when you register your service endpoint it kind of points to an HTTP as uh, LMS so you can read it here that there's a different situation and there is an self-signed certificate or if this SSL certificate has been changed then it is found that URL registration is done behind the scene and that is causing the problem so if you have tried it earlier 
what you need to do is you need to run this command let's quickly run this on my command prompt so if you see an error message like this you can just run this and it'll show you all the registered url reg reservations that has been done so now excluding this if you come to the end you will notice that there are some endpoints which are just registered uh, especially if you have done it and they will be in this way http what is the port number and what is the service name same there will be for https for the same ports that you have enabled and the aj block here which i was pointing and let me open that gives you how you can clear an entry if that becomes a problem so even if you install business central uninstall business central from your environment these entries may not go away from your environment these registered urls that happens right so what you have to do is first delete all these registered urls and the command for that is this which is net sh http delete url acl and then the url and then the url address that you have now i had the similar problem in this business central so don't think from the nav perspective this is just a window setting that you need to remove or the registered url from your environment before you kind of start adding it you don't have to go to the next step where you have to add this uh it in business central it automatically kind of gets added and then your problem kind of gets solved so if you end up with a problem like this make sure to refer this article <coughs> i'll add the link of this article into the first pen comment i don't know you will not need this uh partial command but if you need it as i told you the the code of this will also be available on the github repo which we were seeing earlier and you will be able to get access to this powershell script from here okay so before i let you go from a configuration perspective we have completed how you configure ssl with nav username password in your client services which was the first video which requires you to create a nav username password then uh, create a self sign certificate for testing purposes buy a license from a certification authority for your production environment assign that thumbprint on your service uh, attach that certificate to your https endpoint on your is server and then enable your ssl properties for your soap and audit environment if they are not enabled during installation then make soap and o data enabled uh, while doing this and if you have tried this and uh, are unable to start the service of business central at this moment make sure to look at the event log or event viewer and you will get the same error message which i was showing you refer to the ages block to kind of remove those entries which were created and then restart your process so if you think this was helpful hit the like button if you think your friend or colleague or somebody who is learning business central is getting stuck into this whole process of understanding the ssl certificate and all share this video with them at least with one people one person somewhere and if you haven't then please do subscribe to the channel it helps to motivate us to keep doing the good work if you think we are doing the good work and i'll see you sooner than later into the next video uh, till then keep watching Keep learning and keep sharing. Thank you. Have a nice day.